Hi, it's Dr. Fox. And in this video, I want to talk about managing and beating addiction. And this is really a tough issue. And as a psychologist with over 20 years experience and working with various clients and various degrees of addiction, because there's mild, moderate, severe, and extreme levels of addiction. And it's important to realize that, you know, addiction, it impairs the therapeutic process. It prevents going forward and it slows the therapeutic process. I know that uh, a lot of times, a lot of my clients, they want to go faster. They want to get well quicker, sooner, whatever it may be. And when addiction is on board, what happens is it wears away at the ability to gain insight. And in gaining insight, what happens is, is that it shrouds that clarity. And when we're trying to work on a specific issue, uh, so if it's somebody with a borderline personality disorder who, who's along the borderline spectrum, and let's say we're working on abandonment. And as we're starting to uncover this abandonment, it brings up a lot of fear and concerns and issues, which makes total sense. But what happens is, is that a lot of times addiction is that primary coping strategy, that primary maladaptive coping strategy. So it drives that person to drink or to use. And it blocks out that insight, that ability to get to it. Because just getting that insight or, or recognizing that abandonment or the issues that surround it, for example, it's hard to get there because there's, so to speak, this layer of addiction that's there. And it can really depend upon how entrenched that addiction is. The more entrenched and the greater the severity, the harder it is to get to those issues. So a lot of times with my clients that are dealing with addiction issues, that we try to manage that addiction first. And it can be really, really challenging. And everybody has a different approach. Some people don't like 12-step programs. Some people don't like Alcoholics Anonymous. They don't like uh, Narcotics Anonymous, whatever it is. They don't like that. That's okay. There's all types of different substance abuse and addiction treatments that are out there. And I just want to briefly just kind of touch on some of that process and hopefully it'll help you gain insight. But the most important thing, the thing I want you to take away from this video is that that prevents the process of getting underneath because when you get underneath, you unearth a lot of those things. And that's a good thing because it empowers you with choice, empowers you with objectivity. And the more objective, you are about who you are and dealing with those issues, the more powerful you are to control it and change it. But the more that the addiction is rooted and those roots are deeper, the harder it is and the more challenging it is to get to those source issues and work through those source issues. So let's just talk about some of these steps and strategies right, that can help you out first. You got to recognize that there's a problem. Sometimes that that's the hardest thing. You have to recognize it and you have to be honest about your degree of usage, how much you're using. And I know that a lot of folks underplay it, but it's important to be honest and upfront about the amount of usage that's there. Because if you think that you're being honest with yourself and say, oh, well, I know it's really, you know, two six packs a day, but I'm going to tell my shrink, if you call it shrinks, but I'm going to tell my psychologist, oh, well, it's really just, you know, six beers a night or, you know, one six pack a night. Um, but really what you're doing is you're creating that barrier that I'm talking about. It creates that barrier to objectivity because they have to know, we have to know what's really going on if we're going to get to what's underneath. And I know that it's embarrassing and I know that it's difficult. But, and if we're talking about like BPD or other personality disorders or even trauma, that there's that family in the head component saying, well, if, if you tell him or her, the therapist, the truth, they're, they're going to kick you out of therapy. Nobody is, is going to treat an addict. That's that family in the head. What happens is we build approaches into the treatment to help manage the addiction. And you absolutely positively can do it. Absolutely. And it's in this process of seeking professional help of ways to help you. And you can have that alcohol or, or drug abuse treatment as part of the therapy process, that the therapist can be part of that process. I've done that with a lot of my clients and I'm part of their drug treatment process. 
and it creates a more unified front against those maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns that are so disruptive and corrosive to your life. Now, the other component, and this is really tricky, is that you got to build a healthy support system. And that can be really hard because a lot of times people with alcohol and addiction issues tend to have friends that also have alcohol and addiction issues. And that can often create problems because, in particular for individuals along the BPD spectrum, that abandonment, rejection, sensitivity, and emptiness tend to be these classic core symptoms. So knowing that, it's really hard to pull away from that support system, even one that is addictive, even one that is using, even one that is unhealthy and maladaptive. And it's up to that individual to decide what they're going to do, who they're going to spend time with, absolutely. But once that person typically embraces the sense of sobriety and a sober lifestyle, it's hard to be friends with, with those folks. And if you've experienced this, it'd be great if you want to leave comments about your experience, because I think that helps people too that are going through this now. So please, please do that. Just a little aside, um, as we're, we're going through this process, I think that would be really great. Also, we want to set clear goals and motivation. You want to really be clear about why you want to beat addiction. You have to have clear goals and a strong motivation to help and stay committed to the process. And this is really hard and it's understandable that it's hard, but that's why you need the support of a therapist, of healthy others. It's hard to do it on your own. It didn't say impossible. I just said it's hard to do it on your own. You want to have that healthy support system to move you forward. And again, just remember that there's a lot of treatment options out there, that there's a lot of mental health treatment. There's also medication that can help you as well to kind of manage alcohol and drug abuse issues and control those issues and attenuate those issues as well. doesn't mean that you get addicted to another substance it allows you to manage it and control it over time. And I've had a lot of clients that have first come to me with some severe addiction issues, and they've been able to go to a, a medical doctor who's been able to prescribe certain medications to help manage some of that abstinence and some of that sobriety. And there's a lot of medications that can really help with that. So there's a lot of alternatives, there's a lot of options. You got to take a look at your support system. You got to look at your lifestyle and be willing to change some of those aspects of your lifestyle. It is scary. Absolutely. But that's why I think therapists can be a really good source because we can help you and give you that sense of support that you need to combat this. And it's not easy. And we understand that. And if you feel like you have a therapist who doesn't find another therapist, because it's important that your therapist understands that this is not a simple process. It, it adds to the complexity of the issue. It adds to the complexity of getting underneath those issues, that core content that I talk about. And it's so, so important. Just, just some last components. I want you to forgive yourself. A lot of times I have found that individuals use alcohol and drugs because there's a part of them that they don't like. There's a part of their life that, that they don't like, that they don't want to deal with. And I think that a lot of times it's blame, shame, guilt, all these other factors, and you see it manifest in what I call that family in the head, right? It's that voice that is inside telling you what a failure you are, what a loser you are, what you can't do, what, you know, what you're unable to do, what you'll never do, all this other stuff. And that's why you're in therapy to push that stuff out, to spit it out. I didn't actually spit. That's just an example. Okay. But it's getting those things, but it's forgiving yourself and moving forward. Create those healthy milestones for yourself those markers. It's so important, those healthy markers. And stay connected and accountable to your behavior because it's so important. And people go backwards. It's okay, but people also go forwards too. And hopefully this video has helped you and it, it shines some light on some issues that you may be contending with and that you can deal with it. You can manage it. And I want to wish you all the best. And I genuinely believe that it is possible to manage and beat addiction. Absolutely. Please take care and hope this was helpful. See you next time. Bye-bye.